Hi, I'm Toby. I am interviewing Bill Morning, Ng, and I got a few questions for you. Hello, I am Toby Ames, and I am here with Assembly Morning. Hello, Assembly Member Morning. Hi, Toby. Thank you so much for uh, interviewing me today. I'm looking forward to this. Okay. Um, it is an honor to meet you again. And thank you for your support for people with disabilities. Thank you for fighting to our services. Well, Toby, again, thank you. And I think you provide a wonderful service to the community by conducting these interviews. I've welcomed the opportunity to meet with you and members of the community uh, in an effort to provide broader education to people who maybe aren't familiar with the community of people living with disabilities, thriving with disabilities, but clearly dependent on continued support from the state of California. How will this year's budget affect people with disabilities? We will face more cuts. Well, the last few years, the state of California has faced enormous uh, reductions in the revenues coming into the state since the collapse of the financial industry in 2008. I might mention an unregulated financial industry. We're still suffering uh, the losses in the worst recession since the Great Depression, and it's been necessary in the past budget cycles to make very tough cuts to a broad range of programs, not just disability programs, but education, higher education, safety net programs, Medi-Cal reimbursements, the list goes on and on. And this year, what we're trying to do is to protect the level of cuts uh, to avoid further cuts because they've gone deep. And as we say in Sacramento, we've cut to the bone, we've cut to the bone marrow, and the next proposed cuts could be wholesale amputations of programs. We want to fight against that, but we have limited options right now given the uh, voting uh, distribution in Sacramento. I heard we might get back some of the money that was cut from our services last year. Can you explain that to me? Yes, well, our hope in the, the proposed governor's budget for this next fiscal year, which would be July 1, 2012 through June 30th of 2013, that's called the fiscal year, uh, part of that budget can help protect or restore some funding, but it's dependent on a ballot measure that will be on the ballot in November, and it will require a majority of California voters to agree to an increase in taxes on the wealthiest Californians and a half cent increase in the state sales tax. That would be in place for about five years. It would generate eight to nine billion dollars a year and I believe is absolutely essential not only to balance the budget in numbers but to protect all Californians in education, disability services, Medi-Cal reimbursement, the list goes on and on. But that November ballot measure will be critical to generating some more revenues to help us through these tough times. How do things get better for people in California? How can our economy improve? Well, it's a great question, and I think I've addressed part of that talking about in the short run, trying to build support uh, for the governor's initiative to raise some of the revenues through incrementally higher taxes on the wealthiest Californians. We're talking about people who earn uh, over 250000 a year, over $500,000 a year, over a million dollars a year, and having an incremental increase in the tax they would pay to help the health of the entire state. Other things important for our economy include job creation, uh, creating more jobs and different entry level jobs for all Californians. I've been a strong supporter of job creation, particularly for 
folks in in the disabled community. Uh, I know locally, Goodwill, Shoreline have developed innovative programs uh, for folks to find work, sometimes part-time work, uh, sometimes more full-time work. But there's a very important ingredient, I believe, in, in people's health and mental health is having access to jobs that can help provide meaning to their lives, not only generating income, but providing greater purpose. So I'm a full supporter of job creation and job expansion in our central coast region of California. Are there any promising areas for new jobs in that state? I believe we've seen the largest area of new investment from what are called venture capitalists. Their largest investment has been in the area of uh, alternative energy development, not just solar, but also wind energy, solar energy. People are exploring wave and tide energy and the need for jobs in these areas, not just of high level, highly educated engineers and technologists, but at all levels from uh, installers to service folks. Um, this is not speculative. It's happening right now. It's one of the growth areas in what's otherwise been a slow economy. I also believe in our area, the expansion of high-speed internet is a critical linkage to create more job opportunity, particularly in rural areas of the central coast region. Uh, we have areas that are not attracting new jobs or new businesses because we haven't succeeded in getting uh, high-speed internet to those areas. So that's one area that can provide a catalyst for all types of job creation. What are your plans for the future? I saw on Facebook that you are running for the, st the state Senate. Yes, um, I appreciate your raising that, and uh, you and I are friends on Facebook, so that's why you've been able to see my plans for running for the state Senate. Um, uh, I am a candidate for the new 17th Senate District. It includes all of Santa Cruz County, parts of Santa Clara County, Monterey County, and all of San Luis Obispo County. So it's a huge district. Our state Senate districts are the largest geographic regions. An assembly seat has about 500,000 residents. A U.S. congressional seat has about 750,000 residents. And a state Senate seat is the largest of all with just under a million residents. So it's a large geographical area. We have 80 members in our state assembly, 40 members in our state Senate. So if successful, I'd be one of 40 state senators and would consider it an honor to continue to represent Santa Cruz County in the Central Coast region. If, if you win, what is is use would you focus on as a, a state senator? Will you still support our services? Yeah, it's a great question, Toby. So um, one of my goals, if elected to the state senate, will be to continue to be a strong advocate for disability services. And in addition to support, not just at the state level, but at the community level, with employers, uh, with communities, with residents. I think sometimes our biggest challenge is combating and confronting people's ignorance who aren't familiar, uh, who don't have friends perhaps in the disability community. So part of our shared work is to expand the contacts, the connections, um, and make sure people in our communities are fully aware of how uh, members of the disabled community, their families, their support systems are integral uh, to the health of our communities. Uh, that said, I would also continue to work on economic development, education, and protection of our environment. Uh, so much of our health, both human health and environmental health in this region, is a function of how we are stewards of, an, of our environment. Our oceans, our waterways, our land, our air. Ultimately, every environmental issue 
is a human health issue. So uh, we all share a common purpose, I believe, in being good stewards of our natural environment and seeing that as part and parcel of building a strong public health system as well. And this is Toby Ames. I just interviewed Bill Morning, and thanks for coming. I'll see you next time. Back to your studio. Toby, thank you very much. You're quite welcome. That was great. You're a smooth interviewer, man. You made it thanks. very easy. Uh -huh.